Fictitious forces, also known as pseudo-forces or inertial forces, are those apparent forces that act on objects which are found inside non-inertial reference frames. And one example of a fictitious force is the Coriolis force. The Coriolis force is a fictitious force that acts on objects which are found inside frames that are rotating with a constant angular speed given by omega. So to see exactly what the Coriolis force is and how it creates the Coriolis effect, let's consider the following diagram. So let's suppose we have a rotating circular platform as shown in this diagram and we have two people standing one at position X and the second one at position Y on that rotating platform. Now if we're inside this non-inertial reference frame to the people inside it seems as if they're stationary and the platform itself is stationary and everything else around them, the world around them, is essentially rotating about. So, suppose we are in the non-inertial reference frame of the rotating platform. We have two people that are at rest. One is at position X. The second one is at position Y. Now, the person at position X basically takes a ball and rolls that ball with a velocity V directly at the person found at position Y. So the person at position X rolls the ball with the velocity V directly at the person at position Y. The question is, what exactly will be the pathway as observed by these two people inside this non-inertial reference frame? So basically, instead of following a straight pathway, the pathway that is followed will be this curved dashed line. And the reason is because of this fictitious force known as the Coriolis force. Now, according to the non-inertial reference frame, there are two fictitious forces acting on this ball, on this object. The first fictitious force is the centrifugal force, which basically acts in the same direction as the velocity v. The second force, the second fictitious force, is known as the Coriolis force, and this force acts on the object on the ball perpendicularly with respect to the velocity v. So the centrifugal force acts along this axis, the Coriolis force acts along this axis, and together they basically form the following curved pathway. So this deflection of an object that is traveling on a rotating frame moving with a constant angular speed omega is known as the Coriolis effect and it's basically formed by a fictitious force known as the Coriolis force. Now, the Coriolis force itself is essentially formed by the Coriolis acceleration. So, if we are inside the rotating non-inertial frame, the acceleration causing the Coriolis force is known as the Coriolis acceleration. And it's given by this equation that we're going to derive in the next lecture. So, the Coriolis acceleration is equal to 2 times omega, the angular velocity of our rotating platform multiplied by V, the velocity that is perpendicular with respect to the axis of rotation which is pointing out of the board. So, once again, this equation only works if we're actually inside the non-inertial reference frame. What if we're now found in a stationary inertial reference frame and we're observing the rotating platform? So, let's suppose we switch frames of reference. Now, we're an outside observer who is stationary found inside an inertial reference frame and we're observing this rotating platform that is rotating with a constant angular speed omega in a counterclockwise direction. So, if we take the reference frame of an observer who is stationary and outside the rotating platform, it turns out the Coriolis force does not actually exist. And that's exactly why we call it a fictitious or false force. In fact, this force, the Coriolis force, as well as the centrifugal force, 
only exist inside non-inertial reference frames. So we basically create, we make up these fictitious forces to explain why objects move inside non-inertial frames when we're actually found inside non-inertial frames. But if the Coriolis force doesn't actually exist when we're standing inside the inertial reference frame, what is causing that movement of our ball? So, let's suppose we're outside our, ref our non-inertial reference frame, so we're inside the inertial reference frame, so our entire platform is rotating. So, when person X is at position X, and they release that ball, that ball will travel with the velocity v because that person will force that ball to move with velocity v. And that velocity points in this direction along the x-axis. However, the entire frame is actually rotating and that means the person and the ball that the person is holding is also rotating. So at that particular moment in time, the ball will also have a velocity, let's call it Vx, that will point upward along our y-axis. And together, these two forces will add up, these two velocities will add up to basically form the following pathway that the ball will follow. So in this case, if we're inside the non-inertial reference frame to those people, it's as if they're not actually moving. But if we are this outside observer, these two people are in fact moving because of this rotation. So it's the rotation of this frame that causes the movement of our ball, our object on that rotating frame. So once again, to the outside observer in the inertial reference frame, the ball is released not only with velocity v, as in this case, but also with the velocity vx. Therefore, the actual rotation of the platform is what causes the movement of this ball and not the Coriolis force when we're inside inertial reference frames. But if we're inside non-inertial reference frames, it is the Coriolis force that is causing that deflection pathway. So, once again, to overview, what exactly is the Coriolis force? The Coriolis force is basically a fictitious force that exists and acts on objects which are inside non-inertial reference frames.